Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Beth. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video version of the Wisconsin DNR Decontamination and Disinfection Manual Code. Or, as we like to call it, the DNR DDMC, for short. Kidding. We just like acronyms. Funny. Seriously, though, the prevention of aquatic invasive species is one of the most important water issues of our generation. Beth is right, and we are in a unique position to have a great deal of influence on the spreading of AIS. Think about it. We have staff all over Wisconsin, using lakes, rivers, wetlands, and sometimes multiple rivers a day. It's on us to use the best practices in our everyday life. First thing to know, we have laws that require people to take action to prevent the spread of AIS. For instance, it's illegal to transport aquatic vegetation and water in a live well on a roadway. In fact, it's illegal to knowingly transport any kind of AIS anywhere. The best practices for anyone who uses Wisconsin waters is right there on the sign posted at landings all over the state. Inspect, remove, drain, and never move. And taking action. Are the best ways to stop aquatic hitchhikers. In addition to the sign there, are a few different programs that engage and educate citizens in AIS prevention. Like the Clean Boats, Clean Water Inspection and Education programs. And the Wisconsin Lakes Partnership, the UW Extensions, and the Wisconsin DNR, plus Wisconsin Lakes all have a vested interest in educating citizens, businesses, and government employees on AIS. Like Sam said earlier, we all use our rivers and lakes, and the DNR Manual Code holds us in some cases the experts, to a higher standard. The decontaminating and disinfecting measures that we're going to outline in this video require an investment of time and money that may be unreasonable to expect from the general public. However, for us, these are the best available and most effective methods to assure we are not spreading AIS. But first, a little background. The DNR Manual Code 9183.1 was first signed in 2010. It required us to inspect, remove, drain, and never move AIS in addition to steam and or chemically cleaning treatments. Then, new species like New Zealand mud snails, Asian clams, and spiny water fleas entered our waterways, and an effort to revise the manual code began. Minor revisions in 2016 included applying the manual code to agents, contractors, and some permit holders. Now, following the manual code is pretty easy. Just use the DNR website to find out what AIS are present in the bodies of water you're going to sample. Then, use the species table to find out which disinfection method is the most effective way to treat them. Then get to work. So let's summarize. First, check these sites for known AIS in that area. Then, select the appropriate disinfection method. And finally, decontaminate and disinfect your gear and clothing after field work. But as always, the same simple rules apply. We still need to inspect and clean out our boats, boots, gear, and equipment for plants, animals, mud, and debris. Then remove any attached plants or animals and use a stiff, bristled brush to scrub and rinse off sediments and dirt from everything, like your gloves, boots, gear, and equipment. This will help make sure you never move live fish or live plants to another location. Then use one of the four following steps. Drying, hot water or steam, a chlorine solution, or lastly, the Vercon aquatic solution. Let's go over these one by one. Drying, this is pretty straightforward and simple. After scrubbing your gear, wash your gear with soap and water and let it dry, preferably in the sun for five days or more. Another method is hot water or steam. This can mean a spray, steam bath, or soak, but don't steam anything that could melt like PFDs. On things like boats and nets, a high pressure spray can remove and kill attached organisms. For delicate equipment and boots, a hot water soak works the best. But Beth, some of us use pretty big equipment. No problem. We have large steamers for heavy equipment, too. What about if we're in the field? Take a small steamer with you into the field. And remember, steam is hotter than boiling water, so be sure to wear heat-resistant gloves and clothing. Eye protection is required for DNR employees and recommended for others. Check your employer's safety policy to be sure. The third method is chlorine solution. This is good for gear that won't discolor or where large amounts of hot water aren't available and because these solutions have a short shelf life, they need to be mixed up fresh each day. The required minimum concentration is 500 ppm, or about 2.5 tablespoons per gallon. Total contact time should be 10 minutes, then rinse with water. And even though you will need eye protection and nitrile gloves, it's always good to have eye wash station close by. Lastly, there's Vercon Aquatic. This is only for folks who have proper training and experience in the field. Safety first, have an emergency eye wash station handy Use eye protection, nitrile gloves, and splash goggles or a face shield. You don't want to get this stuff in your eyes. 
Use a 2 to 100 solution or 5.4 tablespoons per gallon and wait for 20 minutes of contact time before you rinse with water. And if you're outside, be sure to stay upwind of the spray. Also, please note that Vercon shouldn't be used on water quality sampling equipment because it will leave a residue that could affect readings. FYI, respirators are available if you need one. Vercon is a good way to go if hot water isn't available and works great on boots and fabrics. Just soak and go. But please note, both chlorine and Vercon should not be used anywhere near surface water. So you see, a little education and some good old common sense can go a long way to help prevent the spread of AIS. Thanks again for watching. And remember, as the ambassadors against AIS, it's up to us to use the best practice methods and set the right example for anybody who might be in the field with us. So spread the word, not AIS. For more information, visit the DNR website or contact an invasive species specialist. Together, we can all help stop aquatic hitchhikers.